Hi, I'm Robert Ranieri, and this is part of my studio space. And you see a spiral staircase here, which was rescued from a dump site. It was a, a, in a power plant many years ago, and, and that, they're adapting it here, welding and cutting and so forth. Here it is in our house, and it actually is parallel in a way, or rhymes, with this painting, which we see here on the wall. And this painting is called Diana Fleeing. Diana was the great, uh, say, uh, huntress of Greek mythology. And uh, she was discovered by a hunter. And uh, through various uh, versions of the story, he is uh, finally, uh, uh, they gotten rid of, erased, because she was so offended to be seen nude, ba bathing in a pool in the woods. And the spiral effect of, this, of the staircase is actually seen here, although I was not thinking of the staircase, I was thinking of an opportunity to take the figure of Diana and to torque it around so that you have a, a twisting action like flame, if you will, if here, and you notice there's a, th a three, three legs and giving a sense of, say, one possible position that she ran through to another, and yet because of the verticality of the overall shape, I've elongated it, making sure that her right leg goes all the way down to a punctuation mark, which is this dot. It's part of the, the idea that every mark you can make on a canvas can be a sound. Even over here on the right, this little cluster, this could be Octaon, the, the hunter that was eliminated, and a certain kind of repetition of those darks, like music notation, or like thumping, like crying, and again, framed by this large pink form here. Of course, you see the arch form and curvilinear of the upper torso of the Diana, and then the undulation of the folds of her garment, and then down here, a very powerful arcing again, whether you think of it as spiral action, compressed, or ovals, or uh, cylinders, and then that motif reoccurs here in various ways, all the way down to a very shadow, very linear uh, re recalling of the oval form. And so there's a, a kind of a, uh, a buildup, like a tower, if you will. Tower, flame-like, spiral form, and of course I eliminate the head and even part of the arms because the torso is an identifiable core element of the figure. It's the power center, let's say. And here you have the torso of Octaeon, which is part of that mythological trilogy of uh, Greek mythology. And then various other forms that are engaged and they kind of unfold. Think of a deck of cards, a spillage of squares or, rect or uh, triangle or even uh, uh, rectangles. So you have a play of simplicity of oval. If it goes up like this from the punctuation mark of the leg, then it can also go this way. So you have a kind of unfolding, an opening out and a spiraling action and a staccato, bang, 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 bang. And then it's the arresting of this and, but the pink action here is a kind of large, simple, actually a recall of, let's say, the upper torso of a human figure. And yet, uh, so it actually comes forward like a bona fide uh, thing that you can pick up in your hand, the entire pink shape. Although it's rather flat next to the modeling that occurs in the upper torso of Diana herself. So fleeing is a way of, uh, say, now you see her, and now you don't. And that's the story of mythology which has inspired artists for a long time, and I'm still doing it. That's a great thing.